Hey everyone, this is Gilberto from Maverick Media Lab, and I'm here with Chris Reef from Contour Mortgage. He's one of our clients, and he's going to give some honest feedback on what it's like uh, working with Maverick Media Lab and uh, getting these realtor appointments that we've been getting him. Chris, I really appreciate you sharing your time with us. You're very welcome. Thank you for thank you for recording this. Absolutely. And so, <clears throat> yeah, so, just so that whoever's watching this has a little bit more context, can you introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about about who you are? Sure. Uh, I'm Chris Reef. Uh, I've been a residential mortgage banker, which in New, and by the way, always in New Jersey and very Eastern Pennsylvania uh, since December of 81. Um, a mortgage banker in New Jersey is, is almost identical to a mortgage broker in California, state by state. It's, it's more common that there's more bankers in New Jersey, but in New Jersey, we're automatically licensed as a broker. So if we want to do non-QM business, we can if we wish, or purely banked business uh, agency stuff. Um, on and off over the years, I've been a President's Club member. I never rode a wave of refinances only. I learned that way, way back that you, you can go out of business doing that. I always made sure I had enough realtor contact that I was continually generating revenue. Uh, and when I say on and off as a President's Club member, I've worked for a company that was acquired by GMAC Mortgage in the mid 80s. I worked for another wonderful mortgage banker out of San Diego, La Jolla. You'd recognize the name if you've been around long enough. It was American Residential, wonderful company until they got acquired by Chase great name, Chase, but you know what happens. A bank acquires a mortgage banker, doesn't always work. On and off, I've been an originating manager four times. I've always preferred managing a pipeline of loans versus managing loans and originating because I never made enough more money as a manager to offset the headaches. It's easier to be an originator and just bring in a few more loans, you'll make the same thing. Um, I'm 69 years old. I've been doing this since 81. And if any of you look back online and in, in the in the a graph online on, on Google that shows you where the stock market's been for 30, 40, 50 years and where the 10-year treasury or 30-year treasury before that bill bond was, you'll see that I'm not the brightest star in the sky. I got into this business in December of 81 when mortgage rates were 17 and 7 eighths percent and three points. You didn't negotiate the points. And you know what? We wrote business. I had a great mentor that helped dramatically in that that man rose in 1977 from a loan officer to 1987. He was the executive VP of GMAC Mortgage, briefly the largest mortgage banker in the US at the time. GM acquired the company we both were with. But anyway, to make a long story short, I got a great I got a, gr a great footing. I, sh I stood on the shoulders of a giant and I love this business. Well, I'm working because I want to work now, not because I have to. Hey folks, you heard my background. I work now for a company who's not a national company, but we're big. We're a large regional player in 33 states, offices in 29 of those states. The states that we're not in, it, we just can't generate enough revenue to make sense and, and a margin. Um, so what happened? I have not originated a single mortgage in four months. Whoa. Now, I don't have to. I won't starve. I've talked to a lot of people. I talk to folks, but every one of them, every potential deal has hair on it. You know what I mean? They're almost qualified, but they, they don't make enough to take the deal maybe to a broker and do a non-QM loan. They don't make agency. There's certainly almost no refinancing going on. So that's, that's a third to half of every lender's pipeline. I have a lot of people I'm talking to, and I've got a book of business ready to write, but I'm not writing it. So I needed to do something. I've bought leads in the past as an experiment on and off and in the recent past, the last just three years to see what happens. Buying leads is awful. Realtors generate the good leads. Our industry does not. We generate not such hot leads. You all know that if you bought them. 
And I went online and I'm now I'm really looking for the first time in my life at solicitors who are telling me they're going to be making me money in, in non-traditional ways. And I stumbled on Maverick, just stumbled on it online. I'm, I'm a technician and I'm a salesperson. I'd, I'd be a bigger producer if I wasn't a technician, but that's, that's my nature. And my nature is I don't trust necessarily salespeople because I'm one of them. I exaggerate. I, okay. I, I don't lie. I'm compliant. But come on, we exaggerate. We don't tell entire truths ever, do we? In, until you actually got the deal. And then you prove that you're, you're worth and, and you prove you're honorable and you deliver what you say you're going to. So I'm very skeptical. So I talked to Nate. Who's Nate? Nate is your first contact with Maverick Media. And Nate sounded very truthful. And I said to him, I said, Nate, this is really, really different. This concept of setting up phone conversations with complete strangers, realtors that might have heard my name, but no, don't know me personally. And when I say might have known my name, I've been very busy up until about eight months ago, like most of you. Well, why is that? COVID driven interest rates lower. I haven't been out to see realtors. I haven't given anybody a box of donuts. I haven't done anything. I, there's been no lunch and learns. I've been busy writing loans and a lot of refinancing. You know how it goes. So I agreed to Maverick. I thought the price was reasonable based on what they could do for me because I recognized based on my cut and what I earn in an average loan. And oh, by the way, an average loan amount in New Jersey is pretty good compared to most of the US, but we're not the West Coast. We're not quite as pricey it, with some exception. So for me, an average loan amount isn't even 300,000. It may be much higher in Southern California. I, I, I don't know, I, I'm guessing it is, but that's average. I don't want large loans. I don't want people too well qualified because they really don't need my help, do they? They really can do it online pretty easily. I just want a first time buyer who wants their hand held. Wow. So I said to Nate, I'll sign up and let me check this out. So I agreed, understanding again, this was not buying leads. This is, this is having an appointment made with a stranger who may have never heard my name, may not know my company name. Now, keep in mind, I'm not working for a big commercial bank or a well-known anybody. Nobody knows Contour Mortgage unless they've done business with me. So the phone call started. The very first call, I'm on the phone for an hour, an hour. I didn't keep her on the phone. She kept me on the phone. And what did I say? All, all I told her was highlights that I knew she didn't know about in our industry. I looked her up online. A phone call was, was set up for, let's say, 10 a.m. on a Monday. And this started back in June, late June. And I said, Roberta, you've been in business for a while, right? Oh, yeah. And I said, what do you really need? She said, you know, I need now, I don't need listings. And we've got listings, but now they're not selling. I need buyers. Can you help me with buyers? I said, yes, but I can't give you a lead. And I would never promise a realtor a lead. Keep in mind, realtors generate better leads and open houses than our industry does trying to give them leads to get business. I'm five minutes into the conversation and she starts to explain a problem her daughter had with financing. It got solved, but it created some real headaches. And then I explained to her how I would have handled that very briefly. And she said, no one told me that. I, I knew that. And I said, you ought to consider doing business with me. And you know what she said? She said, if you forward me your contact information, I'm immediately putting you on my lender vendor list and you're going to the top of the list. I also looked this woman up and she's a regular active realtor. I didn't know her because she lives very close to me where I live, but she hangs her license somewhere pretty far away because there's family there. And I thought, wow, wow, thanks Maverick. This must be an aberration. It can't be this easy. <laughs> and I went on and on. Now, to be fair about this, so far I've had 41 phone calls. Now. Eight of them, eight out of 41, there was no pickup. The realtor didn't pick up and the realtor was reminded of the appointment that we had by Maverick. The appointment was made. Maverick somehow 
knows exactly marketing wise what to say to an agent to get an agent to talk to a lender. Now, keep in mind, let agents hear from lenders all the time. Lenders drop into open houses. They're always bothered sometimes or entertained by, real, by, by, by lenders. So somehow Maverick knows how to make that appointment. And then Maverick checks in just very shortly before the appointment to make sure the realtor hasn't forgotten. But in some cases, people get busy. Or maybe they were just being nice and saying, sure, I'll talk to them, but they didn't want to. I only had eight of those out of 41. And in each case, I left a message. I attempted to text. And then I thought, wait a minute, do I want to chase these people down? No. If they don't want to talk to me, I'll leave a message the old-fashioned way. They're an agent. They're going to listen to the message. They're not 18 years old expecting no message. Right? In many cases, they're 50 to 60 years old. Eight of them did not get back to me, and I thought, no problem. I'm not going to chase you. There's thousands of realtors in New Jersey. We're a very populated state, and actually, we're a very desirable state. We wouldn't be. We wouldn't have real estate prices as high as we do if we weren't desirable. Every other agent I talked to almost or did say the same thing. Wow, Chris, you can do this. You can do that. Why don't I know this? I said, I don't know. Sometimes lenders don't want to participate in programs they can. Sometimes lenders have an investor market that doesn't want a certain loan. So they, they, they have the ability to write a loan, but they, but they don't wish to. I said, well, we do, in all honesty. There was no exaggeration, and I didn't need to. And this went on and on and on. And we got halfway into this through the summer. And I said, wow, I looked back on 23 appointments that I had and I went, oh my God, I got a 57% capture ratio. And what do I mean by capture? I don't expect to write an immediate loan. We're in the worst market we've seen since the 1979 to 81 real estate market. The difference is we're gonna be in and out of it much quicker. That's another story. I, I know that for a fact because I was there then. The rest of you may not have been. But the point was 57% capture. Nate needs to hear about this. I called Nate back and I don't think many loan officers call him back. And I said, Nate, this is so-and-so. Yeah, of course I remember you, Chris. How's it going? Going, Nate. I got a 57% capture ratio. Nate said, how do you measure that? You wrote 57 loan? I, no, no. I said 57%. And I said, agents truthfully, not BSing me, said, they want to work with me. And I said, can I immediately put you on my mailing list? Can I immediately send you valuable, compelling information that's going to make you money going into the market we're going into? And oh, by the way, realtors, you're going to be going into a solid first-time buyer market. You're going to be able to get 97% loans, FHA, VA, conventional stuff, stuff accepted by listing agents and you're going to put more deals together you're going to have more units but a lower volume if that made sense wow we've heard that same thing but nobody talks about that yet really because we don't want to talk about bad news i said it's not bad news we'll be in and out of this recession this nonsense we're dealing with because of an administration that doesn't get it in the white house faster than you can believe this is not going to be a repeat of the 70s and early 80s, where we went 10 years, maybe 15 years with a recession and, and almost a depression. So the point is, I'm measuring when an agent says to me, Chris, but tell me more. Can we get together? Would, Chris, can I buy you a cup of coffee? I, I want to hear more. One agent said to me, Chris, I have a small team. I don't really employ them, but we all work together. We have a little different split. Can I get my team together to meet you? I said, of course, anytime you want. They said, how about in a coffee shop? I said, coffee shops are too noisy. Let's find the old fashioned diner, sit down at 10 in the morning when there's nobody in there and I'll make you money. I guarantee it. Nate said, quote, you're killing them. Nobody has that kind of capture. I said, yeah, I know, Nate, but how many people have 40 years in the business who aren't the sharpest knife in the drawer but because of the experience, really understand that Maverick is where they belong. Don't buy leads, buy Maverick, whatever you do. If I was a manager and I had several new loan officers, I would pay their way to go to Maverick because they're going to make money for me. It's unbelievable. 
So what happened as of a week ago? Now I'm nearing, I'm nearing the end of what I signed up for. I have not caught Maverick in a lie, an exaggeration, an untruth. Every single employee is incredibly professional. My contact that I get text from every day is a wonderful woman. We've got a great person setting up the appointments, but Maverick Meet Marketing is better than your own marketing companies because they know exactly what magic to say on the phone to get you that appointment with a stranger. And you know what? In some cases, the strangers have been realtors I know, but we all know realtors that are nice realtors. They don't do a lot of business and they just don't do business with us because maybe they like us, but they just don't because they're in a captured agency that owns a lender or the lender owns them, or you know the story. And all of a sudden, I'm able to reunite with these folks where they say, hey, Chris, I got a strange call from your company, from your marketing people. I said, mm, well, how's that strange? Well, they wanted me to have a phone call with you, but I already know you, Chris. And you know what? What a great opening to say, yeah, but you know, we haven't done business in a while. I always liked you, and I, I didn't do business because I'm mostly a listing agent. I said, I know. I get it. That's what realtors try to build themselves to being only listers. They get paid when they list. They don't always get paid when they're a buy side agent. And I said, in one case, three days ago, I said, why don't I buy you a cup of coffee and show you how to make money in this weird market? When do you want to get together? Wow. I, I couldn't just pick an agent out of the blue and do that. Maverick did it for me. So no question about it. Maverick hands down is buying, even if your company buys you leads and you don't pay a cent for them, go to Maverick. You'll make money. I, I'm not sure what else I can say, but Love it. I, I appreciate the words. as of three days ago, I'm at a 61% capture ratio. Now, I haven't written a single loan, but I have agents ready to send me business. They don't have the business at the moment because we came out of August. August in New Jersey is a slow real estate market. It starts to get busier after September, but I've fielded more calls from potential buyers, rehab property buyers. One person was a reverse. I don't necessarily want to write those loans unless we go into a market like this where it's dramatically slower. I've had more phone conversations because of Maverick with potential buyers that are going to work with me in two to three weeks in September than I did for four months since March or April. I, you know, I'm as serious as a heart attack, as they used to say. Do business with Maverick and you do yourself a favor. So there I you see, go. They've already started sending the referrals, but because of the market, it hasn't yet been approved yet or they haven't gotten into a home, correct? Oh, absolutely. There's no home to buy yet. The realtors don't know if these people are qualified, but the biggest problem is what a strong realtor recognizes. And the very strongest are really old ladies. And this is going to sound weird. There's, they're mostly women that I knew and I met 40, 35, and 30 years ago when they were very active, heavy hitters. Whether they did a business with me or not is another story. They know who I was. In those days, We'd always drop into realtors' offices, especially just before an office meeting. This was pre-internet. This was like 1995 to 2000, 2010, in, in, that, in that range. They knew who you were. They respected you. But, you know, for whatever reason, they're doing business elsewhere. Well, then they became listing agents only because they were so successful. So you didn't do business with them. And now they're kind of retired. But if they still live in the area, they never give up their license they know who you are and you can pick up the phone and call them and say, you know, I'd be happy to help anybody you're working with. Oh, Chris, wow, you're still in the business? And I say the same thing. I'm working because I want to, not because I have to. And isn't that cool? I mean, if you can make a six-figure income and not sweat, you want to do that and have all the time to go on vacation and add that to maybe social security that you're also collecting, your 401k, you may or may not be drawing on. But if you don't sweat, you know what you're doing, you like what you're doing, and you can regulate the business coming in. Wow, what a great world in an awful market. And by the way, we're going into, and we are in an awful market. It's going to get worse, and it'll get much better, much quicker than the 1970s, early 80s problems of, of inflation. So that's one thing I wanted to ask you. What would you say to someone who might be right now, like in the midst of 
the market that we're in kind of, you know, might be tightening up or might be pulling back um, as a result of how things are with the market. So they might be kind of slowing down with their marketing or they might be kind of pulling back um, as a result of the market. What would you say to those individuals? Um, what would be your, your advice to them? I'd say you have to do the toughest thing in the world that a business owner does, because every one of you, if you're totally commissioned or, or if you own your own little brokerage and it's just you, you have to spend more money than you ever spent before marketing and you've got to do it with an expert. You're not the expert marketer. Or if you work for the big company and you know, the huge players, the massive ones, people who advertise at Super Bowls, massive commercial banks, the banks of America, the Wells Fargo's, the huge players, their marketing people aren't as good as Maverick. Their marketing people are general marketers that are also afraid of compliance. They're scared to death of being non-compliant and they won't paint the same picture as a compliant Maverick will. Maverick's better. However, you gotta spend money that you're not making right now. You gotta go into your pocket or you may go out of business because you may not last it through the maybe year or year and a half. But I gotta give you a little history lesson that old guys can give because we have more perspective than a, than a higher wage earning, better producing, more units, more volume loan officer than me. You don't have perspective. In 70, 73, January of 73, I paid 20, 33 cents a gallon for gas. By January of 74, I was paying 65 cents a gallon. Now you might think that's oh, nothing. Oh yeah, it was something. That was double. That's what really catapulted the inflation of the 70s that got out of control. And why? The country had a great leader of the Federal Reserve named Paul Volcker. This guy was a big bear of a six foot four guy that wore a brown hat like old guys used to, smoked a big stogie, and he walked around, but he was scared to death for a very good reason. He was scared to death of causing a great depression. He was born in 1927. He remembered as a kid and a young adult, the real Great Depression, didn't he? He was, he, so now he's in charge and he kind of knew instinctively that I've got to keep raising interest rates very quickly to beat this terrible inflation because we have the Middle Eastern countries who suddenly woke up and realized, well, we hate Americans, of course, but we hate the fact they make so much money. So they should be paying double for our gas because they can. We didn't cause that problem. We didn't shut down a pipeline in North Dakota and Canada as our current administration did. The Arabs did it. They just added to the inflation we already had, which wasn't the end of the world. Well, now this is before my time in the market, but it's the history lesson. Volcker was scared to death to act until Ronald Reagan came into office in January of 81. And Reagan said to Volcker, all right, you better fix this right now. We can't go on this way anymore. Right, Nancy? Right, Mr. President. And Paul Volcker said, do I have the okay to do what I got to do? It might bring us into a Great Depression. It's better than this. We had 18% mortgage rates, 18 and three points, three points. Okay. He fixed it in two years. By 1983, mortgage rates had dropped from 18% to 13 a five point drop in two years. Things were so busy, loan officers, good loan officers were saying to younger loan officers, I'm so busy with purchase mortgages and realtors that I, I have to keep happy. I can't write refinances here, you take them all. In those days, pre-internet, lenders advertised on a whole page of a newspaper from A to Z. The phone calls just went nonstop for people refinancing. It was, it was one of the busiest times you can imagine. And mortgage rates were 13%, but dropping and dropping. So now, Mr. Powell, the head of our Federal Reserve, he gets to stand on a shoulder of a giant, Volcker. Volcker was allowed to really deliver America the tough medicine and fix, fix that inflation, but it took it took 10 years of inflation. We're going to be in and out of this in a couple of years because it's not just the Mideast. We've got, for whatever reason, I'm not playing politics. I'm not in love with Trump. I'm not in love with Biden, but I'm more in love with Trump than Biden, believe me. Biden shut 
down the, the, the Keystone pipeline, if he had not done that, you know that fuel would be at least a dollar a gallon less, wouldn't it? We'd have less inflation, we'd have lower interest rates. Well, the Fed will fix this, but I suspect we're gonna see much higher rates between now and December. And then if the signal from the media is that, gee, interest rates are so high, it's really affected home prices across the country. And what does the media pick on first? Always Southern California, because you guys are the priciest. And then they look at New York, New Jersey, the coasts. And then they can't help but saying, what a great time for a first time buyer. House prices are less, rates are higher. And oh, you can always refinance a loan. When that signal goes out there, you'll be writing more units than you did the last two years, but smaller loan amounts because they're first time buyers, higher LTVs, more FHA, more Fannie, this and that, and every oddball program that the government has because the sellers will accept those offers that they're not accepting today because we're still, or at least in New Jersey, and I suspect Southern California, we're right at the absolute end of that wild ass seller's market, right? But there's still inventory that there won't be in a couple months because people don't list homes around Thanksgiving forward. They wait, don't they? They wait to do that in February and March. So I don't have a crystal ball. I just base things historically, but there's some perspective for you all. You, you got to be able to make it through this period. If you don't have the money or you have a wife that's, or a spouse that's going to divorce you because you're in a job where you're not bringing income, you got to do what you got to do. But I, I strongly urge you to talk to a fellow named Nate who works for this gentleman and let Nate explain what he'll do because it made sense to me and Maverick has not exaggerated one iota. They're delivering Wow, I can't believe how well they're delivering. I'm so busy now loading in new names and contact information, and, and here's the kicker. I kid you not, yesterday I, I had, we, we, we call it today a lunch and learn. We used to call it a seminar. Before Zoom, before the internet, loan officers that were known by a real estate agency, usually a boutique, you know what they're like. They're, they're not the big agencies that have a lender inside. They're just a boutique, but they have their favorites, favorite loan officers. I had, a, I had an assigned call to, to make about a week and a half ago to a very nice lady. And I said, hi, as I start all my calls, gee, hi, this is Chris, Chris Reef with, with Contour Mortgage. And you, you should be expecting this call. Oh, yes, your marketing, your marketing people called me, which... Maverick is my marketing people. And uh, I said, can I take five minutes of your time? I know it's really precious. And we've got a really interesting program that might make you money going into what's going to become a buyer's market. And I knew who I was talking to because I looked her up online. Oh, a 28 year agent. She was the, she or is the co-owner of a small boutique, very small boutique, which is what I want. Okay. And I knew she knew the business. Okay. And she said to me, well, Chris, sure, I'm in the car. You've got 25 minutes of my time. Wow. Here's a lady that wanted to hear what I had to say because she had nothing better to do. She's in the car. She's not waiting on another call. She's not doing anything. And all I told her about was a couple kind of unique programs that most of the time our industry doesn't write because they're either too pricey, there's too many negatives, but we actually have the programs. And she said, you could actually do that? I said, sure, as long as a buyer is qualified. Wow, you need to speak to my office. This was in 15 minutes conversation. And I, and I almost said, Maria, you, you don't even know me. You want me to come into your office? Wow, <laughs> you never even met me. You don't know if I have a third eye in the middle of my head. You don't know what I look like, how tall I am, what color I am, how old I am. You don't know a thing about me. I knew about her though. So I knew what to say. I knew 28 years in the business, she was used to the seminars that our industry would give. And then in those days, 28, 38 years ago, it was always the same. You taught the agent how to qualify a buyer. Hey, we didn't have a credit report up front before the mid nineties. In the eighties, we got the credit report eventually. We didn't even have a credit report. So agents 
could qualify a buyer and call you and say, I've got a qualified buyer for a conventional loan putting 5% down. So I had the seminar yesterday in her office and man, I killed them. Every <laughs> single person said, here's my card. Can you send me a little more detail on this program, on that program? We've got, we've got buyers, we can't get offers accepted. And I said, here is my opening. I said, I'm not gonna guarantee anything because I don't know who you're working with, but I can give you several tools to get an offer accepted on a zero down VA loan, USDA loan, three and a half percent down FHA. I said, if I can show you how to do that, would you do business with me? Absolutely. I said, I just can't email you something. We have to have a cup of coffee. I'll buy you a cup of coffee at the diner. I'll buy you a beer at the bar. I need 20 minutes of your time to explain it. Oh, you got it. So one after the other, there happens to be, well, in New Jersey, we call it a diner, the old fashioned chrome diner that they built in the yeah. 20s and 30s. I'd prefer to meet people in those locations because they're not noisy, like a coffee shop. So anyway, one by one, I'll meet those agents and really win them over. And then it's just a matter of marketing, isn't it? All I have to do is drip them information. But wow, it wouldn't have happened without Maverick. I, I can't, wow. So I'm wowed. So Nate, who Nate is, is your first contact. Nate is the salesman. Nate, Nate, Nate will sell you not just the sizzle, but the steak. You'll get the whole picture. And, and Nate said to me the other day, would you want to sign up again? I said, absolutely. But come on, Nate. I, I, I said, I'm not going to sign up now going toward the winter. I said, it'll make people money. If I really needed the money now, keep in mind, I'm not starving if I didn't bring in a single loan. And I haven't in four months. But I said, let me come back to you like in January. So we can do like at least 90 days, maybe six months and build and build and build so I can pick and choose. Again, I'm a loan officer. I don't want to sweat. I want to pick and choose the loans I want to work with, with the agencies I want to work with, so that I can make six figures but have a lot of time. Wow. You, you haven't heard a story like that before. Nate, definitely I, not. It's definitely unique. Yeah, yeah I, know. I also know that, that you've been in the industry for that long that, you know, we're you're in a very unique situation that in 79, 81, you've, you've seen how things are. And now you can, you know, really give your expertise on what things are, are moving forward based on, on the past as well. Um, one thing before we, we end off here, what do you think over the years, um, you've seen a lot of people come and go, what do you feel is the, I guess, top factors that make a loan officer successful? And what are the things holding them back from becoming successful loan officers? What, what are those patterns that you see over the years? Uh, you know what? Um, thankfully, I've never had a gambling problem. I know of three huge play. When I say huge producers, these were massive, massive unit guys. And for whatever reason, I, I didn't hang out with them. I just knew the story. All of them became heavy gamblers and they got in serious trouble and then they had to be non-compliant and do more business to play pay gambling debt. This is really weird because I didn't hang out with them, but they got in serious trouble. They got their companies in trouble. And you know as well as I do today, if you screw if you screw up and you're not compliant, yeah, you, know, you better do it conventionally, not VA or FHA, because you can go to jail and you can close your employer down. Come on look at compliance problems, a player as big as Wells Fargo had nationally. And we can talk about that because it was on the public news. Wells Fargo screwed up when they kind of, I guess, made fake bank accounts for people or something. Now that wasn't mortgage banking, but they were fined incredibly heavily in, in several, several ways. And I saw a documentary on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I hate to talk about the competition, but I, I'm just painting a broad picture because it was on the national news. But they did something where our whole industry inadvertently and accidentally helped them do that. That's another story for another day. I'll explain how that happened. But they didn't manage something properly. They didn't manage brokered and correspondent relationships better. So what about other loan officers? Other other loan officers? Other loan officers burn out. They do so much business. They're like, they're like young stockbrokers who literally become millionaires 
with their own efforts and they're working 24 seven and they, and they have a heart attack at age 35. And that's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to have that at my age, <laughs> not, not, not at 35. Um, yeah. They come and go, but the biggest problem, and this is preached to by big lenders, big lenders can look at thousands of originators and tell where the real problems are. The problems are what just happened for the last three years or two and a half years. When we go through a market we never expected to be in, because nobody ever would ex have expected COVID, come on, like some disease from China that it's almost like something out of a Stephen King novel, The Stand, isn't it? It's like, oh my God. So loan officers ride a wave of refinancing. And maybe we should, because we pay attention to the business at the moment, not the business we're going to get two years from now. If you write too many refis and then suddenly every single refi is gone, where are your relationships that are going to send you first time buyers? And now you need 10 first time buyers at the moment to get one offer accepted if it's a 97 or 96 and a half percent FHA loan, right? Because sellers still won't ac accept those. They will in another 90 to 120 days, by the way. By, by the end of January, You'll, you, there'll be a ton more closed FHA business and originated FHA. But if you only have refis in your pipeline, then what about the realtors? Who, who's going to send you business? Then you have to have enough money and you got to be like me, an old guy, kind of. Maybe I tend to think of myself as the beginning of old, not the end of old. You, you got to have realtors or you got to have the money to be able to build fresh relationships immediately. And every one of you can do that if you're seasoned with Maverick, because as long as you get the introduction to any realtor, get introductions to five realtors, one of them does some regular business and they'll send you a piece of that. So if you find three of them that do some regular business and you wrote three more loans a month, what's your gross revenue on, on a loan per month? Is it as little as 2,800? Multiply that times three and then figure your net take home. You'll be able to make it through this, this tough period that, that Chairman Powell is going to send us through and get us in and out of quicker. It's not going to be eight years, 10 years like Volcker. We'll get in and out of it quickly, but you can't expect more refis, can you? Except some sad soul that got a subprime mortgage 20 years ago and didn't realize you could refinance out of it. Yeah, yeah maybe that makes sense, but you got to have purchase money loans with first time buyers. So if, if you can't do that and you don't have the money to pay Maverick, then it gets worse. You got to put it on a credit card and pay Maverick and you got to bet on the come as they say in Vegas or Atlantic city, don't you? You got to hope and pray that Maverick is as good as I say they are. You've got my guarantee. And by the way, the last name is reef like reef in the ocean, like smoke and reefer. You can find me in the old fashioned phone book. You can find me online. Call me if you don't believe me. Put the money on a credit card, pay Maverick, get your contacts and start writing business because the business is going to be there in the spring, even if interest rates are 11%. And I'm, I don't expect that, but who to expect our president to do the knucklehead stuff he's done, right? Wh whoever, like everything, not just the pipeline, just every move he makes has caused all this angst. So I don't know, I, I hope I'm being positive and not negative, but I'm, I'm trying to paint the real picture. I'm painting the picture. You of the of yeah, you give know. a lot of perspective. I also hear that from other clients that have been in the industry for like quite some time, not as much as you, but you know, let's say 10 plus years, 15, 20 plus. And they'll say a similar thing, how like they didn't really focus that much on, on refis. They still did it, but they kept their realtors and they focused on their purchase uh, their purchases, because that's really like the long-term side yeah. of things. And it seems like you had kind of, uh, you, you're, you're saying the same thing as well, like how important the realtors are for growing your purchase business and in growing that long-term uh, mortgage career and uh, oh, stable. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll say one more thing about realtors. That's, it's kind of odd. Most industries that are service related or very technical products, technical meaning pharmaceutical sales, um, IT stuff, where you, where you really need to be a smart guy and a, or gal and a hustler. Most of those industries go out of the way to make friends, be buddies with the people that are gonna send them business. 
And if they're real successful, they want to take them out on their boats. They want to take them golfing. They want to buy them expensive dinners. <laughs> our, our industry, for the most part, we hate realtors. We dislike <laughs> them. And no, I'm, I'm telling you, it's true. We yeah, dislike right. them intently. We don't hang out with them. I can think of one in 20 I would like to invite and be my friend. And usually that's someone that doesn't send you business because you're just a nice person or he's a nice guy. Realtors are awful. They really are, but you gotta, you gotta be there with them. You gotta be their buddy. You gotta be a salesman and you gotta come across so believable like a commercial we've all seen on TV. You gotta come across like Tom Selleck. He is the most believable senior citizen in this country. And what's he talk about? Mortgages because they're such a difficult thing to talk about, aren't they? But people believe Tom Selleck when he talks about reverses because he's believable. So be, be believable. Don't be a weasel. Make buddies with realtors. Do whatever you can because hopefully it's just a few months. It might be a year of very difficult times. You got to get through it to make the money again. Uh, what can I say? We, we didn't expect COVID. We didn't expect this administration. Nobody expected the nutty country that we're in. And we're in a wacky nation right now. Really nutty. So who knows what's around the corner? So perfect. there you go. And that's the perfect note to, uh, to wrap it all up. Chris, once again, I really, really appreciate you just sharing everything. You were like extremely detailed about all, all the numbers and everything and, and what your experience has been. So I really appreciate you uh, not only just sharing your time right now, but choosing Maverick as you know, the person to help you grow your, real, uh, your referral partnerships. Well, thank you. Thanks, thanks for noticing. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that hearing it from you because based on my research on you personally, you're a superstar. You're hitting it out of the park and you're a really young guy. I never expected when I saw your picture and I thought, whoa, look at what he's <laughs> done so far. Do, do, man, take this like Roy Kroc did with McDonald's in 1955 and do this with every industry that needs a pairing. Loan officers need realtors, realtors need us. Who knows? Maybe the steel industry and in somewhere needs a partner. You can do it. You've got the model. It's great. Good for you. Fine. It's only the start now. I know. I know. But you know how to do it. And that's that's the key. McDonald's knows how to do it, but they don't make such a hot hamburger, do they? It's awful. <laughs> but you know what to expect. You have a wonderful product. Thank you so much, Chris. I, I appreciate you. Good luck.